Get Pucked. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Get Pucked podcast. Vito, Dave, and Matt here with you. And gentlemen, we are probably a little over two weeks out of the draft. So first and foremost, I got to ask you, are we excited? Ask away. Are we excited? I, I am. I'm happy that we're, this season's finally coming to an end. The playoffs are almost done. Um, and we can move on to the next thing and really dive into the to the off season and you know see what the next moves are for the Habs, see what's what's gonna happen, who's gonna move across the NHL, things like that. There's already the rumors that you're hearing things percolating a little bit, you know. Always, uh, always rumors, but like you know, now it's, it, with the, the new apparent GM in Carolina, Nikas might go very soon. There's a lot of shifting around. Now you're hearing names like Markstrom out there, and you know it's starting to to heat up a little bit. Mm. This is what a lot of Montreal fans live for: the off season. It's uh, it's uh, what, what what's exciting prospects. You're telling me prospects and potential trades and potential free agents and moves on the draft floor. I mean, like this is what people live for. Some people. So uh, I am excited to be honest. It is a fun part of the year. It, it's it's certainly uh, it wraps up the year well. I think the NHL does it perfectly, mo- most likely better than any other league in terms of the draft. It's just so fun and there's so much intrigue uh, surrounding it. So yeah, I'm definitely excited about it. All there right. was a time, there was a time in the past where people were more, you know, would debate whether it was more exciting between the NHL trade deadline or the offseason. I think that's come and gone now. It's pretty much the offseason is far more exciting. Oh, than for the sure. Trade deadline yeah. now. For sure. Yeah. When I was, it was when I was in high school the, and the trade deadline happened, like there was literally like 75 trades on that day. You would be refreshing all the time and there'd literally be constant, constant, constant trading. It was awesome, the trade deadline. Now, I mean, people, you know, with the cap and with people getting smarter, obviously these deals aren't as, as great anymore. You must have been, uh, you must have been loaded, Dave, refreshing when you were in high school. What kind of data plan Whoa, did you have back old, then? How old do you think I Whoa. am? Dude? How old do you now. think I am? Jeez. Come on now. The, okay. the days of uh, Bobby Olick getting traded yeah. and signing yeah. a seven billion dollar <laughs> contract over there. Yeah, let, yeah, let me the let me. Speaking of the speaking of the draft and speaking of the trades and speaking of the excitement, I know everybody is talking about the number five pick, and rightfully so. It's an important pick. It's going to be a very very pivotal piece to the plan. However, I'm going to refrain from jumping into that one for now. What I am curious to know about is that that. Let's call it the the redheaded stepchild, if you will, of picks. Number 26. Mm. Number 26 is there. They have it. It's Winnipeg's pick. It's theirs. It's the Canadians' pick. What do you think the probability is that they're going to move that pick in a trade, be it getting a player or trying to move up in the draft? Like, let me just hear probability wise. Do you think they're going to use it for a, a draft at that level, at, at or at that number rather, at twenty six? Or do you see this more as a piece that there's pretty much no way they're going to be drafting there? They're going to be leveraging it for something else. I'd go fifty fifty. I think it could go either way. Of course you I would. Th- <laughs> no, but I'm I'm serious. I I think that you know with this group, uh, they're obviously always looking to move up, but they're obviously set on their prices. So if 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 they they won't overpay or or. Or so if there's nothing that happens, I, I could see them very well drafting at 26. I wouldn't. I would. I would. You know, try to move the pick as much as I can. But with this group, it's it's difficult to say what's going to happen. So I, that's why I'm going to put out a coin toss. I mean, either way, I, could, I wouldn't be surprised. 95 percent chance that it's being traded. I put it. I put it that high. 95 percent. It's almost a it. certainty. Basically. They've gone two years. Well, they haven't proven otherwise. They've gone two years in a row where they traded their their, their second first round pick or their later pick to go and acquire somebody, Kirby Doc, and then in in New Hope. The difference with the Kirby Doc was literally on the draft floor, but it was still they had to acquire a second first round pick. They still did it. So it was two years in a row that they did that. Is this going to be year three? I think so. I think part of the strategy of when they got that first round pick in the Sean Monahan deal was because that was what they wanted to do. You know, they got Monaghan. Uh, we know that they, they took Monaghan basically for free, uh, just, you know, for as a cap dump. And the idea was to get his game back to where it needed to be to be able to take another first and do these types of things. Now, uh, have they targeted a player? Is there a player that they have in mind to be able to do th- this kind of move? I'm not sure. There are There has been some rumblings. There's some names out there that we've, that we've seen across social media, the Ken Johnsons of the world and things like that. Does it happen? We'll see. But I put it at about 95%. Because they've done it two years in a row. 
Okay, so 95% it's moving, 50% that it's moving, and not that this is scripted in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to go 70%. That, Ooh. <laughs> that Hedge, hedging gonna, the bets. That they're going to the move bets. it. I, I honestly can't really, I don't want to be too, too sure because again, right with the prices, the cap going up, there's a lot of factors out there. I consider the Utah team a massive uh, disturber and what they're potentially going to do and how that might drive prices all the way up uh, across the board. So I, I'm i more confident that they're going to try to use it as a piece to go get, I think, um, an established player more. Uh, than using it for the sake of kind of trying to move up in the draft. I think it'll be very difficult to move up this draft versus other drafts. And it does prompt me to ask that question, though. Uh, since we all think there's a pretty decent likelihood they're going to move it, do you think it's more likely they're going to try to use it to move up in the draft or more likely they're going to use it to try to go get uh, another player, be it a new hook or a dock or something else, a much bigger package to try to acquire a proper top six back? definitely going to get another player. I, I don't see them moving up in the draft. I mean, I, I, I think they're past that point. I think I've spoken about this before. I think that they need to go get an impact player. I think they need to, to show what, what they can do in terms of getting current talent that's not a project or not that. So I think that if you're going to move that pick, it has to come with some value in return. I mean, I get that there's value associated with the draft, but they have draft picks, man. It's like they've done that, been there. It's time. It's time to move on from that, uh, that thinking. I think that they're on the same page know the person from seeing what they're doing and they're deep think that they're on the same see them moving up unless they move up and then they move that yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you, we got we got you cutting in and out there a little bit there dave we'll see if you can set fix yourself up while we switch it over to veto what do you think man i i think that when you look at the whole organization with the number of prospects that they have and they've already got decisions to make on some of the prospects that they've drafted in the past and that they're getting closer and closer to the 50 uh, limit contract i don't i just them drafting another player to to build and all that it's like they especially at 20 <clears throat> excuse me at 26 they've got all of that already doesn't mean they can't find a you know a diamond in the rough at 26 or, or you know an established piece or somebody drops down that people don't expect and and things like that but um, I just think that they're going to want to go and gr use that asset to go and acquire somebody that's a little further along in their development, somebody who they look and see that has a bit more of a ceiling. Um, you know, like Newhook, where uh, last year was a player that they acquired where they traded basically a pick in and around the same range. I don't remember exactly how, uh, like how, what, what the, where that pick was in the draft uh, at that point, but it was just somebody that and i think they're going to go for they'll use that piece to get a player that addresses a certain need or a certain aspect of the game that maybe they're a little uh, uh you know um that they're lacking a little bit but it's it's i just don't see them doing the whole moving up thing unless there's like you know a player that they're really really targeting or they really like like a you know there's rumors of Seneki and if he were to drop down but by all accounts, it looks like he's actually moving up in the draft. Um, I just don't see it. I, I think they're going to want some of those names that you that you know you've heard in the rumor mill that are maybe out of favor on their current teams, but would probably benefit for a change of scenery and do well with somebody like you know what a team like Montreal and Marty Saint Louis and them. So just saying to say, it was the thirty first pick, thirty seventh pick, and Gianni Fairbrother for New Hook. So there you go. You know what I mean? It was. It was a 31st pick on top of that. And by all accounts, this is a deeper draft from a depth perspective. Yes, there's a significant drop off, it would seem, the moment you pass the, the top 12, top 13, let's say. But uh, it's still a much deeper draft than it was last year. And they still got somebody like Newhook, who, by all accounts, he, he was a, before his injury, he was a great, he was a pretty solid contributor. You saw the, the foot speed he has on the ice. You saw what he could bring to the game. He, brought, he got, had his highest point production total since he got into the NHL at, while missing some games. There's a lot of there's a lot of nice things to like about Newhook, um, and he could be in the second line, just like he's probably ideally best fit. Best fit his best fit is in the third line. So like I could see them doing something more like that than them going and draft another player. That's you know what's going to happen with this player. When am I going to when are we going to sign his ELC if we ever sign his ELC uh, okay. and things like that. So but but we're talking about drafting at 26. If in some right. world that 26 morphed into a top 15. You'd be you'd be very happy about drafting a second player all of a sudden, right? Well, 
I, I, I mean, I could see that also being a possibility, mainly because, again, it's back to they have so many players that, that they're getting closer to the 50 limit contract that they're going to have to start to shed some of these players out. And, you know, ideally they want to move the ones that are bigger contracts and, they, and do capped up deals. But there's some, some prospects or younger players that the Montreal Canadiens have that they're already saying that where are they going to fit? Can you even sign them? You know, we've got a lot of depth on defense and all of that stuff. So maybe they grab the 26 and a player to move up, but it's only if there's really a player that they truly like and they can see a fit that dropped to somewhere like 15. If they don't, if there's a player that they have so much of that same player already, then what's the point of giving up an asset for for something? No, of the no, same I thing? don't. I don't think they're going to do it for for six or half a dozen type trade. But I mean, if you have, like you say, you have this plethora of all these prospects, and I mean, for the most part, you look at the prospect pool. A lot of them are NHL caliber, or at least trending that way. But you don't mm. see many of them that are trending to top six. You see a lot of a lot of middling players that you you're looking at. And you're like, well, we have the rights to, and it's going to be very exciting when they come up, and they're going to fill a spot right away. You're going to get them on the cheap for a couple of years, and you need players like that. I'm not going to say no, but when you have the opportunity to go, and like we're suggesting, they're saying after one in this draft between two and like ten to fifteen. Not that they're all interchangeable, but they're very close. It's a very deep draft they're suggesting. And again, we're not draft experts. We're just taking it on the words of the experts that have put this out there if you have the opportunity to go grab a second player in this draft in the top 15 and it's going to cost you 26 obviously and maybe more than one of your better prospects perhaps that's worth the cost so what i know we all agree we want them to move the 26 for a, a bona fide player but hypothetically dave what do you think it would cost to take that 26 plus 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 tell me what the plus 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 is to get up into the top 15 of this draft man i think it would it would take a considerable player like I, I don't think that it's just like your your extra parts and your spare parts like why would a team do that like you always have to look at the other teams why would if you're holding a top 15 spot would you trade your your switch whatever 11 to 15 spots down in the draft and just get a spare part of the montreal canadians like it doesn't make sense at all so i think that you're looking at a key prospect most likely and maybe even more maybe you add a second pick a second round pick maybe you add uh another prospect or or something like that i just don't see it as a thing that's even probably going to be discussed. Like I, I just don't say unless they're absolutely in love with the player, I don't see it. I, I just they have to go and move and get some bona fide players right now. It's not something I would do. I don't think that they're in the business of doing that either. Uh, again, as I said before, when I was uh, cut off, my my daughter unplugged my Wi-Fi pod. That that is what that is what happened. But um, it's basically just. Uh, Unless you're trading that pick kind of like Romanov style where you're going to flip that pick later, like, okay, I could see it maybe happening, but it's going to take a bit to, to do that. I don't think it's so easy to change 26 into 12. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's going to take something. Oh, Teams won't just give that up for nothing. I agree. At, at this point with some of the heat and uh, that, you know, this uh, the player, that prospect that I think you'd see 26 and maybe an Owen Beck and something else, maybe even to get into there, it would take... Because Owen Beck now, there's a lot of there's a, there's a bit of a spotlight on him with the Memorial Cup and things like that. And there's teams that have already, you know, would like that kind of player on their roster. Not to say that that's what would do it. I I still think it would be the 26 Owen Beck and something yeah, else more like you know. But it, it, just to get into that, especially if you want to get into from 10 to like 13, 15 might be a bit more. 15 to 17 might be a little more feasible. A little more. Like but it's it's it would be a high cost right now. Right now, anybody who's talking about moving up, the price tag is high. I think I think it's too it's too high. I mean, when I think about it too, and I think you both bang on about this, it's hard to see a world where you take twenty six and flip it into a top fifteen, not necessarily with spare pieces, but without sacrificing something significant, like significant. And I mean, yeah. I, I know that we're not talking Gooley, we're not talking Ryan Backer. Like, they wouldn't do this to move up like that. It wouldn't make any sense. But you'd have to look at your next your next big tiers of prospects. You'd have to possibly look at maybe a roster player, a legitimate player out there. Um, and then who knows, even more. And at some given point, you're sitting back and you're like, what what is the what's the value? I don't, th of this? I don't think the moving I don't think the moving Why? Is, the, is, the, is, the, is the way that they're gonna go. It it would be more like there's yeah. you know those teams that traded away their first rounds for rental players and things like that and won a first round. 
and they might have a player that's of in, that's interesting. Those are the teams that I could see that 26 going to for a piece that Montreal's interested in that has a high enough ceiling that it's like, okay, we're going to, you know, they're a little further along in their development and whatnot. And those types of teams typically, a lot of their picks have been traded away over the years and they got to replenish the cupboard a little bit while they're still competing. I could see those, like, you know, that kind of thing happening. But right now, we all know the big asset is the number five. And if Montreal's willing to trade that or not, then I just don't see the, the appetite for that. Do you think there is a desire to kind of dangle Winnipeg's pick back at them and say, do you want it back? Let's work something out here. We'll trade it back to you in this draft. Maybe add a little something and, and maybe try to pry a player away from them like uh, Cole Perfetti, if that's possible. Is that something yes. that, that yes. you think both parties might be interested in doing? It's possible, but how many of the same style of player are the Montreal Canadiens going to have another smallish forward who, yes, has a pretty solid potential? Uh, Cole Perfetti is nice. It's nice, but Montreal has got a lot of those smallish forwards, and especially with the message that Gordon and Hughes and all of them have conveyed that, it, you know, they want to go with start adding on some size. Is he really the player that um, that they want to go and target? Is it a possibility and they get give back the 26 to get him? Yeah. Yeah, he's a name. He's one of those names that you heard along the lines of the Ken Johnsons that and those players that could be available that, you know, maybe want a change of scenery or want a bit of a bigger role in another team. 100%. But uh, I just don't see the fit for Montreal with that player. And we've even gotten comments uh, on our last episode where somebody, uh, a few people mentioned Cole Perfetti's name. And great take. Love it. Uh, appreciate it, actually. But I just don't see that specific player being the player that Montreal would go after or is not at the, ver at the very least not at the top of their, their priority list. Oh, that's fair. I didn't know you were a sizist, but okay, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the same I, size as Cole Perfetti. I, 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 I do agree that he, he it would be a weird fit. Not like a weird fit, but it just it's not something that you'd, you you go out and you'd be like, hey, Cole Perfetti would be a perfect fit with the Canadians. They can make it work for sure. I think it just costs a lot, probably a lot more than you think. You know, he's a former 10th overall pick. He's almost a 20 goal scorer in the NHL. And what, he's 22 years old. I think it'll cost a little bit more than just returning your your their first round pick, kindly returning their well, I did 26th say plus. overall pick. I yeah, say, but, but, but I don't think I don't think it'd be that expensive. No, I don't think so either. But but it would cost so more than just the first round. Pick especially sure. especially that he's like being miscast right now on that roster, and that yeah. it, there yeah. has been rumblings that he he wants a top six role now. Didn't mean to go cut you off there, Dave. Go on. No, I mean that's it. I I think it's just why you know I don't I don't know. It's just if you could get it done for cheap for that for I, I would do it for sure. I would take a flyer on Cole Perfetti. I think that he has a lot to offer, and I think that it'd be an interesting piece. But it's just, I think it will cost more than you think. I kind of sit back. I'm trying to pull it up now. Um, just to see if I can get these uh, a little bit more tangible names here. Because a lot of people, right, for a while now, obviously, since we found out that it's going to be 26, I mean, they're, they're all about, like, in my estimation, overvaluating this pick. I don't think that the later first round picks are that coveted. And when you talk about well, using I mean. it as a, as a piece to go get something, oh my God, I sit there and wonder to myself, like, why would a team, again, not having Dave knock the sign with GMs being stupid, but why would a team give up on a, you know, bona fide NHL player that they might have? And I'm thinking Cole Perfetti for that for, for in this particular case. And like you said, he scored 20 goals and he's of the right age that fits what Montreal is looking to do. But he's also a young player and you know what you got and you drafted him high. And now you're like, well, I'm a, I'm a jettison him to bring back, okay, another prospect, put whatever prospect minus our top, top, top quality prospects. You can take any of the other ones. And the 26th pick back. There's, like, but there's many variables. I just don't see that, why a team would do that, Winnipeg or otherwise. There's many variables to that. Again, if a player's miscast, if they're unhappy, if they don't like playing where they're playing, if they don't but like they, their that goal, player still has value, man. Like just because it doesn't work under your system, it doesn't mean that you, you're gonna give up. You could trade him for right. nothing. I I don't disagree, but that that 26th pick, while you're saying okay, it's not that coveted, it is coveted, especially on draft day, especially for teams who have been trading away first round pick after first round pick after first round pick. 
they need to build those cupboards and get players on the cheap and you know players that they don't have to pay now or or you know for example if it, you know uh, Cole Perfetti is an RFA and he's you look at his qualifying offers and the, for example I don't know if it's exactly this if it's three or three and a half million dollars and that team's already up against the cap I mean, they need that kind of flexibility the cap kind of changes things a little bit and, and there's many variables and many aspects to consider when when you say why would they give that player up they may not want to give that player up but they may be forced to give that player up for no, many different I, reasons it's less about the player to me and it's more about the pick like i'm trying to go back now to go see who was drafted at 26 to see if I like that, probably well okay so so forget the kid from last year cuz I, I don't even think I've ever heard of him. Go, the year before, which ironically was Montreal's pick, and they took uh, Meshar, right? Yeah. Okay. Now you go a year further back. 26, um, Carson Lambos. Okay. Cool. You, you cool go a year back. Uh, 26 <laughs> was Jake Neighbors. Okay. Okay. How many play, how many teams are rumored to oh, to be asking about Jake Neighbors? You know what I mean? Okay, hold on, hold on, because now maybe I, I'm course correcting here. Twenty six the previous year it was Jacob Peltier. Another go one. Go back twenty six over here. Week. Jacob Bernard Docker. Again, okay. serviceable. Go back twenty six here. <laughs> Jake Ottinger. <laughs> go back. 20, hold on a second. Had... Tage Thompson. Okay, I changed my mind. So twenty six is a monster pick. Monster, it's not, I would not trade it for anything. No, I'm kidding. No, but, but it's it, there's okay. value. To, there's value. There to is. That. It's Espe seemingly especially yeah. the fact that more teams have been added to the NHL now, and you're it's like 26 yeah. ain't as close as it used to be to 30. You know what I mean? It's like that's uh the, then Noah Jolson wow. the year before. Again, Montreal. Montreal's had 26 quite a bit. It seems the year before 26 Nikita Sherback. That was a mis that that sucked because apparently they really wanted Pasternak. But year before hey. that, Shea Theodore. Hey, you know what? I mean, twenty six hits. It looks like quite a bit. Okay, here finally, Brendan Gauntz. He played in the NHL. Yeah, he played in the look, NHL. There, it's no doubt that there's players. You know, but like look around at 25, look, 24. There's a lot of a lot of misses on these as well. You know what I mean? Like it's just. It, there's there's value yes in it, but it's not as valuable. You still need a scouting staff. You need like teams that know what they're doing will be able to to, to you know get the right pick in it. But R realistically, my whole point was what were people overvaluating? And to be fair, I really should have done this exercise. And I just kind of thought that later first round picks for the most part don't really hit. And so I'm like, okay, yes, you want one, and you go and try to find a team like Vito was suggesting that doesn't have a first round. Better to take a shot because you never know what you might get at the end. But it just so happens that 26 <laughs> seemingly is skewed uh, in hits. Guys, you're looking in a vacuum. Okay, you're, you're looking at a vacuum, though, okay? Because, look, I, I, I'm looking at the 2016 draft window was Tage Thompson, okay? We're, we're, okay, impressive, very very impressive. But around him are Henrik Borgstrom, German Rubstov, Dennis Chalowski, um, Brett Howden, Lucas Johansson. It's like these guys' these guys guys names are not... NHL, I, okay. And that's where, that's where, I, NHL, that's where I came stars. in and said that I don't really see why it's so coveted. That being said... There is something weird about number 26 because I'm all the way back okay, to 2010 I, I, now. Okay, okay. But there's and it seems there's like more times than not it hit. I'm not, not going to believe in that whole 26 no. superstition or whatever you want to call it. That, the luck <laughs> of the draw at 26, any of that stuff. But I'm going to say that there is value in first-round picks, whether you like it or not. There, There's there's teams that have – I mean, listen, look at the package that the Pittsburgh Penguins got for Jake Gensel. There was a second round, another player who was drafted in the second round. Like if second rounds have value – even late first rounds have value. The quite the thing is, is that a late first round pick is not going to get the kind of value where you're going to say, "Oh my God, this player is going to be an elite superstar." Could it be that a player hits no. their ceiling and they get lucky? Yes. There's all these these things that could, could, could like, you know, that you could factor in. I do think Newhook has a bit more to his game. I do think he's a guy that you know on a really good contending team is on your third, but he could play on your second line and things like that. That was a great asset for a 31st pick and a 37 and. Jani Fairbrother, that was a good asset management there. But, you know, again, it, it's to, it, the 26th pick is an asset that will be moved, and I'm still putting it at 95% if I'm going to go back to what I said before. It's, it will be moved. 
I know that the it. NHL teams and front offices have have um, access to the same resource that I just used called Wikipedia, and they can go see all the hits of 26, <laughs> and maybe that's something that they can be like, hmm, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe. 25, no, 24, no, but 26, there might be something there. Anyways, I think we're all in agreement. I think some movement is going to happen there because I do think teams really just like first-round picks. There's just something about it. And if you can get a player off a team, like you say, that's miscast or that has expressed the desire to kind of move on, you just add that to the sort of, okay, well, let's just make this happen. And the fan base will will not come after us if we at least get a first back. So it is curious to know what they're going to do. I think it'd be wild if we hear Bettman come up and say he has a trade to announce and we're in the 10 to 12 range and he goes Montreal trade. I mean, I think we'd all go nuts. Well, is we'd go the possible? same way as uh, when Kirby Doc. Uh... The, the I, that was even crazier. I think that trade happened before the, the draft even started. It's mm -hmm. like, before we even get to it, trades. So, yeah, that was pretty wild, too. You're going to like this one. <laughs> You're going to like this one. Yeah. Listen, a lot of excitement. There's a lot of things. I think, realistically, one of the things uh, we're going to we're gonna ask you guys who are listening, um, what would you do with the 26? What do you think is going to happen with it? It's kind of one of those things that we're not overly looking at as a fan base because you have the fifth overall pick, and rightfully so. It needs to take a lot of our attention, and everybody's talking about the Lindstroms and Demidovs and Aginlas and what have you. But you can't forget that there's another first-round pick in there, and the way that this uh, organization has acted in the past, there's a, I don't know, about 95%, but I think it's greater than 50% likelihood that there's going to be some sort of movement with this pick. So curious to know what you guys think. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Today, this is going to be a slightly shorter episode than, than the last one. So we're going to bring it to a close there. That's what we uh, we want to hear from you guys. So please let us know. Um, also, of course, like, subscribe. Thanks very much. We really appreciate it. There's been a lot of action on the last episode. We were really, really happy with it. And thank you so much for taking the time for writing comments. We really enjoy those. So let us know, like I say, what would you do? What do you think is going to happen? Vito, Dave, last thoughts? I like Vito's 95%. I hope it comes, uh, I hope it doesn't come through true so that we could uh, make fun of him a bit more. Oh, it's okay. Any, we got that guy in the comments. It's two episodes in a, in a row that he keeps saying he hates me and, uh, and stuff like that. Who can so, hate Vito? Come nobody on. Nobody hates Vito. Come Stop. on. Let's go. No. Bring it. Cut it out. <laughs> Thanks very much. Keep it nice in the comments, please. Keep it nice. For Vito, Matt, and Dave, this was Get Pucked.